More Singaporeans have been hired to fill top Asia-Pacific roles in the past three years. Well, that's according to Russell Reynolds Associates, that's a leading global senior executive search and advisory firm. But what does it take to be the regional or global CEO of a multinational corporation? And are Singaporeans ready for senior management positions in global companies? To answer that, Wong Siu-ing spoke to business leaders and experts. After 26 years with Standard Chartered Bank, Mr Lim cheng Tech was recently promoted to a newly created role as CEO for ASEAN Markets. During this time, he's taken on different roles in the bank, including Chief Operating Officer in China, CEO for Singapore as well as China. Mr Lim says it's no easy task having to learn the language, culture and business practices of a foreign country. China is a market I completely knew nothing about never been there from what I read in the paper and even back in those days it was nothing much this was before China entered the WTO so the world's focus on China wasn't as close as what it is today learning that while you speak Mandarin you do not necessarily speak Mandarin and we are not necessarily bilingual to that extent learning the business practices and how to motivate a group of people that is totally different from Singaporeans Experts say Singapore being a global business hub provides a conducive environment for those motivated to scale the corporate ladder. And according to a survey of 85 companies by Russell Reynolds Associates, more Singaporeans have been recruited for senior Asia-Pacific roles. Among the leadership positions that it has helped to place, in 2011, 6% were Singaporean. This climbed to 13% in 2012 and 15% last year. There is also a growing trend of hiring executives from the region for Asia-Pacific roles. So what is it that companies look for? The five key attributes that most companies would typically look for would be you know, commercial acumen, strategic thinking capabilities, you know, the ability to manage teams, um, strong executive presence, as well as effective communication skills. Companies are looking for executives with very strong international mindset and experience, as well as exposure, right? In addition, a CEO must also be able to relate to people from diverse culture and background. Observers say having a global mindset and overseas experience are becoming increasingly important as companies seek expansion into foreign markets. But it's not always easy getting workers to take on an overseas posting. The comfort in Singapore has become a deterrent in many ways. One of the best things about Singapore is everything works here. We need you to be in a market where everything doesn't work. And then how do you manage that kind of market situation? And how do you garner the team to work with you? So it's, it's a long development process. The Singapore Human Resources Institute says other factors that could weigh against an overseas posting include lack of family support or social network in a foreign country and concerns about integrating their children back into Singapore's education system after being away for a few years. SHRI notes that the talent pool is growing in the region and companies are casting the net wide. Singapore is not the only choice uh, uh, if the cost of uh, posting Singapore's uh, CEO futures potential is considered uh, not cost effective. They probably consider alternate sources, typically like India or China. And they find that uh, the marketplace that's growing is typically at these two areas. So to get the local pool from India and China seems to be a convenient uh, uh, target. And that will uh, make Singapore lose out. But the Institute says work is being done to groom the next generation of leaders to drive Singapore companies and even MNCs, as schools offer exchange programmes and encourage students to be more innovative. The Singapore Management University has seen more students going on multiple overseas exchange programmes and internships, as well as taking up a foreign language. I'm actually seeing a lot of our students taking an additional degree in Tsinghua in Fudan. So they are going to take a language program. Our young starts to realise that they need to think global from day one. And if we can't get it from our own educational system, we get it from outside the country. And you have to take ownership to go and do that. 
a lot of them are very entrepreneurial. <laughs> they actually want to be their own bosses. And that's exactly the case with Razer Inc., a company which develops products for gamers. Founded by Singaporean Tan Min Liang and Robert Krakow in the late 90s, the company has 500 employees worldwide today, with 250 of them based in Singapore. Razer is now seen as a big name in the gaming circuit, tapping a dynamic video game industry that's projected to grow from 67 billion US dollars in 2013 to 82 billion US dollars in 2017. A lawyer by training, Mr. Tan says the key is to chase your passion and reach out to a broader market. Having a lot more exposure is definitely a good thing. and We, we, we kind of see it with the um, local institutions right now. They're sending people to the valley, they're sending people you know, all around the world to kind of get the best out and, and bring it back to Singapore. We're seeing a whole lot of uh, new startup entrepreneurs that um, have kind of distilled the very best of um, the various um, other places. Today, Razer has offices in nine cities, including San Francisco, Hamburg, Seoul, Shanghai and Singapore. So whether it's starting out on your own or climbing the corporate ladder, a lot depends on getting a kick out of what you do and going after your goals.